Berlin, crowds awaited the arrival of... Mr. Wilson, President of the Board of Trade, was to sign an Anglo-American Films Agreement with Mr. Eric Johnston, President of America's Motion Picture Association, was welcomed all round. It should mean a saving of dollars and, of course, a better exchange of films. The ceremony itself was thoroughly photographed and carried through with complete goodwill. Mr. Wilson had this to say. His Majesty's Government welcomes this agreement which, having due regard to our dollar difficulties, makes possible the renewed flow of films between the two countries. It holds out real prospects that our own films will now get a firm footing in the American market, and with this hope and the removal of the unsettlement surrounding the industry, uh, I look for a real all-out effort in British film production. This was Mr. Wilson, of course, and his announcement is certainly welcome. This doesn't mean that we are going to slow up on our export drive for clothing or for textiles. It does mean that the supplies that are available will now be open to all to buy in the shops without having to surrender coupons. Derationing doesn't mean that all clothes will be available in abundant supply. The export drive must come first. And I'm appealing to the public not to buy more than they really need. And where there are difficulties, I know I can count on the trade to see that supplies are shared out fairly and equally. Then he gets together with Mr. Hulagar of South Africa. Mr. Harold Wilson talks with Mr. Abbott of Canada, whose participation is particularly welcome as representing a dollar country, who, as president of the Board of Trade, has been responsible for now Nye goes into the wilderness, force him to resign. Cut any ice with delegates meeting at the Brighton Ice Rink. If better terms can't be arranged, then Labour will demand a... Among leading personalities, we spotted party leader Hugh Gateskill and his wife. Mr Gateskill again with Mr George Brown, deputy leader. The party leadership favours general election before the big decisions taken. And Mr Harold Wilson arriving with his family. This moment of election is at a time when in many respects the task is a great deal easier than it might have been. For one thing, during the last three or four weeks when the party has had no elected leader, we have remained a cohesive force in the House of Commons. And a great deal of the credit for that must go to the acting leader of the party, George Brown, who has kept us together during that period. I during these last three weeks, I don't think anyone can say that we have been backward or bashful in our task of attacking the government. If any of you are in any doubt about that, you might just check with Mr. Macmillan. And so far as I am concerned, I regard myself as having been elected, not by 144, but now by the party, by the whole party. And I regard it as my duty now to serve the whole party, both in Parliament and in the country.